So in this video, we will continue our discussion on gases. Especially, we will uh, discuss uh, how to find the data uh, given an address, in what way uh, the data is stored uh, from the memory into the cache. Uh, typically, these are known as the uh, mapping policies. So, at a high level view, we can assume that CAS is nothing but a collection of bytes. Okay, so uh, you can assume these are the 2D structures of rows and columns. And uh, one of this uh, intersection of rows and columns is actually dealing with one byte. Okay, uh, remember the processor will send an address to get the data to clear so the processor sends 32 bit address and it demands for the data right or similarly uh, the dram actually responds with the data for a given address for a given 32 bit address the dram responds with the data and we should have a mechanism to place this data right so where to put it whether here 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 or wherever right so that will be the discussion uh, in this uh, video okay so in cases instead of uh, storing uh, data at a byte level it stores at the uh, granularity called block or line level where a line is typically a uh, multiple uh, collection of bytes many bytes typically 64 to 128 bytes why is it so because we want to exploit spatial locality right so if you are dealing with an integer array and uh, each of your array indices is of just four bytes. So if you store uh, uh, 64 bytes, that means you are storing 16 uh, array indices in, in uh, one line, right? So it's just exploiting the spatial locality with the hunch that, yeah, because I am accessing uh, A of zero, I might access A of one also. So let's bring it from the DRAM into the cache, right? So this is a new term that you should remember. Uh, a line is a collection of bytes, right? So Typically, the last level caches or the middle level L2 and L3 level caches, they, they transfer the entire line to the upper level. But let's say we have an L1 cache. Uh, so then the processor demands for a specific uh, uh, data, right? So it may demand for the data of A0 or A1, uh, the example that I was giving, right? So in that case, we need to extract the exact byte uh, from the line and uh, respond it to the processor. No, not the entire line. Right, so but you can think about your uh, different data types like integer, characters, floors, and all. So your processor may demand just one byte of data, right? But the cache stores uh, the entire line, so you need to extract a particular byte out of that line. Okay. So uh, let's take an example here. So if your processor is sending a 32-bit address, uh, assuming we have a 4GB DRAM, uh, let, let's not get into how we get this address now because there are so many issues involved. But to make it simple, let's assume we are uh, addressing our memory and memory is 4 GB. So we need 32 bit to access our memory. And uh, let's assume we have a cache, which is of 1024 lines. And each line is of 32 bytes. So you can calculate the capacity here, right? So uh, we have two to the power 10 lines. Each line is of 32 uh, bytes. So that makes it a 32 KB cache, right? So now given an address, we, we should have a mechanism to find out where exactly the data is, right? So if you look at uh, the, the granularity that we have talked about so far, we have talked about bytes, right? And then we talked about lines, which store multiple bytes. So if a cache line is of 32 bytes and you need to access one of them, then you need a byte offset, which is also known as the block offset. Okay. So you, you, you just need uh, five bits to identify which particular uh, byte to access, right? Out of 32 uh, bytes, right? So let's say this is the entire line zero and you have byte number zero to 31, right? So in the address from the processor, you should have five bits that will tell you, okay, go, go and fetch me this particular byte, right? So you need five bits from your address that will actually identify a particular byte. And then uh, we should also know that we, we are interested in a particular byte, but from which line? Because CAS stores data in, in the form of lines, right? Since we have 1024 lines, so you need another 10 bits 
to find out a line number right which is also known as uh, uh, the indexing bits here because we are actually uh, indexing into a particular line to find out our data right so we are done with uh, 15 bits but we still have 17 bits left from the processor and uh, the cache should not respond some uh, data which is mapped some other address so if your processor is demanding for uh, data which is stored in address x so this cache should make sure that it's sending the data for address x and not x minus delta so it has to make sure that the rest 17 bits also matches right so the rest 17 bits are also stored somewhere uh, in the cache and uh, that that should be compared with the 17 bits which is coming from the processor and only when the 17 bits match then only we should provide the block number in the byte of sort right so that's the notion of what is called a direct mapped cache where you have one to one mapping between your index uh, bits and uh, the location where the data is right once you find out uh, the particular line you can actually go for a particular byte based on the opposite bits but before that you have to make sure that you are getting a tag hit okay so let's look at uh, direct map cache in action so let's the processor sends a 32 bit address uh, we extracted the index bits and based on the index bits let's say we found out that we have to go to line number one and uh, from there now we have to compare our tag so uh, remember i told you we need to store these tags uh, because otherwise we, we won't be able to know whether we are uh, actually responding the data for the same address that the processor is demanding for. So uh, the data is stored in uh, one, one form of uh, array and the tag is stored in another form of array called it's a tag array and it's a data array. And once you get a tag hit, that means the upper bits are matching and we have also found out where exactly we are, we are looking for the data. Then uh, depending on the byte offset, you actually get the data. As simple as that. Uh, you should remember that each of this tag also stores something called a valid bit. So for each line, uh, there is a tag. If you remember, right? So each line has a tag, and each tag has a uh, valid bit. So the valid bit says wh whether this line contains valid data or not. So when you boot up your system, all these bits will be invalid. And once you start getting data from DRAM, this will become valid. Okay uh just a thought experiment uh thought process for for you guys uh try to find out why not uh, this way of uh, mapping into uh your cache to get the data right why uh index bits here and why not here right i'm not going to answer it here uh, think about it it's pretty intuitive uh this is an example that you may uh, like to uh, go through to see how these addresses will be eventually mapped into a cache and see what's the benefit of uh, this particular uh, mapping compared to this one okay uh, then we have something called set way associative cache which, which is a bit different from direct map and here what we are providing is we are providing multiple ways for a given index so remember in the direct map cache there is a one-on-one -on -one mapping between the index bits and the line number but now we are saying uh, let's group multiple lines together and call them as set it's a cache set okay it's a set of lines and uh, what will be the size of the set where well, that is actually determined by the ways so how many ways you can put a line within a set so that is the way associative cache okay so in this case we are showing a two-way set associative cache that means a set is a group of two lines so let's say this is line zero this is line one and it has its own corresponding tag so when the request comes from the processor we will extract the index bits as usual but now we have to compare two tags instead of one tag that we are comparing in the direct map cache okay so let's see uh, how these things happen uh, now you can see that we are dealing with Two ways so let's say this is way zero this is way one okay remember we don't need uh, 
bits to identify which way we are going for. We, we are just interested to find out which particular set we are uh, going for, okay? So as usual, we will extract the index bits that will give a set number, not a line number, okay? Because now set is collection of multiple lines. And what it will do is it will actually go and compare the tag bits of both the lines or both the blocks, whatever you say, right? Assuming the valid bit is set in both the cases, you check which particular uh, comparator is giving you a hit, right? Whichever comparator gives you a hit, based on that, you extract the data, right? Either from way zero or way one. So, you can also uh, go for a four way associative guess where we are talking about data array and tag array, and there are four ways. This is way zero, way one, way two, way three, right? Process is similar. You extract the index bits first. That will tell you the set number. So now one set is of four ways. Four ways meaning four lines. Now we have to find out which of these lines we are interested in. So for that we have to compare the tag bits. So there is comparator for each line. Whichever comparator gives a hit, based on that we will extract the data. That's why there is a multiplexer here or a selector. So if you look at in terms of access latency, uh, associative cases will have higher access latency because we are putting a multiplexer here to select a particular line or a particular uh, block from uh, OA number of blocks, right? Which was not the case in the direct map cache because there was only one block that we are interested in and then it was directly mapped. And the extreme example will be a fully associative cache, which is, uh, Where the entire one cast is one set right so in that case there is no need of index bits you just uh, compare the tag for all the blocks or all the lines which are present in the cast whichever line gives you a hit you extract the byte the corresponding byte right so this is highly impractical because you need uh, hundreds and thousands of uh, comparators to compare uh, the tag of all the lines a bit different way to understand this mapping policy is if you are familiar with uh, Sherlock Holmes, look at this address. And uh, so the CAS index is nothing but the street address, right? Within a street, uh, so out of so many streets, you want to find out where exactly uh, Sherlock Holmes lives. So you are actually interested in a particular uh, street. Within that street, uh, you have to make sure that uh, your tag bits also match. Right, but then only you will be uh, sure that uh, you you are uh, going to the right uh, flat or apartment. Uh, so you, you can take the example of a direct mapped cache. So this is giving you the line number. You are checking the tag bits here, and if there is a tag hit, and uh, you you know that the valid bit is also set, then based on the line number, you extract your uh, data which is the byte offset okay so there are various knobs of interest now if you can look at right what will be the size of a line how many associativity what will be the size of a cache so this will have uh, trade-offs in terms of latency complexity area energy and power and then uh, uh, there, there, there is a tool called cacti uh, uh, this is the github link go and download it and you can see how these things change when you change your, uh, let's say, line size or associativity or your cache size, right? So this will be uh, useful for the upcoming uh, lab where you will actually deal with uh, optimizing or understanding uh, cache hierarchy for various kinds of applications. Right? So go and download and uh, look for uh, all these parameters. So remember, all these parameters are interrelated. If you increase your uh, cache size, it will affect your latency, right? So if you are going from a 32 KB cache to one MB cache, your latency number will go up, right? So similarly, if you are increasing your line size, your complexity will go up, your energy power will go up, right? So so uh, go and explore that. So uh, this slide is actually a summary for you if you are uh, if you want to just uh, you know uh, look into the complete picture. 
so uh, this is kind of a memory in the in the form of uh, let's say memory block which is actually not a case there is nothing called a memory block but just for simplicity you can assume there are memory blocks memory addresses there are let's say, 32 addresses by two blocks and uh, you can map it to the direct map to set assertive or fully assertive right in fully assertive you can put a corresponding block anywhere in the cache right in the direct mapped you have to look at the size of the cache the size of the cache is only eight that means it can store only eight memory blocks in the cache right that means the indexing function uh, will be or the mapping function will be like uh, 12 uh, modulo 8 right so uh, that will actually tell you which location to go for so in this case it will be uh, four if you are going for a two-way set of state cache now look at what happens you had eight blocks in the direct mapped cache eight blocks become four sets because one set is of two ways right so you need to define uh, or you need to find out which particular set your uh, memory block will uh, go into so uh, the mapping function will change a bit because now instead of dealing with number of uh, lines you are dealing with the number of sets okay this is another uh, summary slide that you can actually uh, play around with right uh, sifting bits here and there uh, finding out what exactly happens right so up till this point it's pretty straightforward it's just the block offset which gives you a particular byte right but uh, if you are increasing your associativity right uh, that means i'm putting more and more lines in one set right so this this is the direction that i'm going into eventually i will end up into a fully associative cache then what will happen the index bits will become slowly uh, it will go away right there will be there won't be any index bits in a fully associative cache there is no index bits right um, if you are going to decrease your associativity that means you are putting less number of lines per set then the index bits will go up right because now there will be more number of sets right so four sets will become eight sets if you are decreasing your associativity right and eventually the extreme point here is the direct map right so uh, look into all this uh, indexing mechanisms and then try to find out uh, what what are the trade offs or what are the possible trade offs with that, I will stop. Thank you.